My name's Neil Balthaser, and I'm your host at Ultra Mobility, the channel all about Class B camper vans. If you're interested in Class B camper vans or are looking to buy, this is the channel for you. If you haven't done so already, I ask you to please consider subscribing. It's super easy. Just click the subscribe button, and it'll help me continue to make great videos. I have a great question from a viewer, Kristen Jones, and she says, we are so new to this. Do you have a first through last steps for setting up at a campground? Well, I'll give you my philosophy on this, Kristen, and you know, for everyone, your mileage may vary. So you'll discover your own way that you like to set up for camping. But here's what I like to do, and here's what works for me. And for some of you who uh, may not know, I did use this exact van when I traveled across the country from Montreal to San Francisco. So I traveled, I was, I was over 2,000 miles or so. It was about a five day, seven day trip. So I had plenty of time and I do camp in this van as well on occasion. So I do have a pretty good experience in this van and in a previous van about what works for me. So here's what works for me. One of the reasons why I bought a camper van, a small camper van, this is a 19 foot six inch camper van, is for the convenience of being able to use it as a car as well. And that includes when I go camping. So I like to go out and explore the area. I like to make fresh meals. I don't generally stock up my refrigerator a week in advance and have it chock full of food. I mean, you can do that. And this refrigerator is certainly big enough for that. But I I generally stock it up with a few things. But in general, I, I will go out and I'll find the fresh produce and, and things like that for making my meal. So I do not like having any hookups when I go when I go camping at all. Basically, my mode of thinking is I'm boondocking all the time, even when I'm in a campground. So when I pull into a campground, I just pull into my space. Sometimes I don't even get a space with hookups. It, it, it gives me more flexibility. You'll find during the camping season that campgrounds can get filled up pretty quickly, but if you're flexible and say, you know what, I don't need hookups, I just need a place to pull in, uh, you'll be able to find spaces a little more easily. So I don't hook up when I first pull in, unless it's hot. If it's hot out, and I need to run the roof air C, then I will hook up the shore power so I can run the roof air C. But that's very rare for me. I think I only did that once or twice, but I've needed to do that once or twice. Generally, at, in the evenings, you can open the windows here and, and the vents and things like that, and you can cool off the inside of the van pretty quickly. So unless I need to hook up shore power, <clears throat> I, don't, uh, I don't hook anything up. I don't hook my water up. And I, I certainly never hook up my sewer hose. And let me talk about my reasons for each one of those. So I like to always be self-contained. So I do always usually have a lot of fresh water in my van. I use my fresh water levels as a gauge for letting me know when I should dump my black and gray water tanks. Why is that? It's because if I hook up to city water and I'm using city water, then that city water is going obviously into my fresh and gray water tanks. And then I really truly have to rely on the level indicators, which, which you always do have to do. But as a secondary defense for me, if I'm never hooking up to city water, then I can also use my fresh water tank as a gauge. So in other words, when my fresh water tank gets down close to zero and I have not hooked up to city water, it obviously means that it's time to dunk my black and gray water tanks, that water had to go somewhere. So it went into my black and gray water tanks. So it's just an indicator for me to, even though the readings may say 50% or 75%, it means dump those tanks because they're pretty much full. So that's why I, I generally never hook up to, to city water when I, can, when I go to a campsite, because I like to just continue that system. I don't hook up the sewer connection because it's a bad practice. What people end up doing when they hook up the sewer connection is they open, so there's two valves at your dump station. There's a black valve for your black tank, which is where your toilet water is. And then there's a gray valve for your sink and, and shower water. 
And what a lot of people do is they'll just, when they hook up permanently at a camp spot, they hook, when they hook up their sewer, they'll open those two valves so that when they don't have to worry about their tanks filling up and the water is just continually flushing out of the system, kind of like your house. The problem with an RV is with the black tank, when you do that, what tends to happen is because of physics, all of the liquids will flow out of the tank just fine, leaving behind anything that's a non-liquid, like a solid mass and those things, leaving those behind in the black tank to dry out. And that can become a problem later with smells and things like that coming back into your RV. So it's a really bad practice to hook up your sewer hose and leave open your black water tank valves. It's, it's not a good practice. So if you're not going to do that, which you shouldn't do, then there's really no reason to have your sewer hose hooked up until you need to empty it. So that's what I do. So I don't hook up anything when I first arrive at the camp and I just, you know, I've got solar, I've got everything that I need it, uh, and I boondock. Now when I'm ready to go, then I'll, I will hook up my water and I will hook up my sewer. The first thing that I do before I go is if I had any fresh water left over in my fresh water tank, I fill up my black and gray water tanks up to the top. <clears throat> then I hook up outside and then I flush the black water tank and I flush the gray water tank, just like I would normally do. Just because if I'm at a campground, it's an opportunity for me to empty my tanks out. I don't have to do it later. So I, when I'm ready to leave, I flush my tanks. Then I do hook up my and fill up my fresh water tank from the gravity fill using the hose. The, the, there's usually a spigot connection for you at the campsite. So I just hook up my fresh water hose, water, and I fill up on the side of the van. I fill up my fresh water tank. That's it. I'm done. It takes me all of maybe 10 minutes and then I'm on my way and I'm at my next destination. So that's the process that I use. I, it's super simple for me. It means I never really have to think about it because I'm always boondocking. I, it, for me, it takes care of a lot of problems like not having to worry about smelly black water tanks and not having to worry about if I overflow because I'm always just using my fresh water tank all the way down to zero and giving me the ability to pull out of my campsite anytime I want without having to untether and unumbilical my cords and all of that. It just gives me a lot more freedom. So that's what works for me. It may be different for you. So you'll just have to try it out and experiment. Maybe you like having your electricity hooked up. Maybe you need to have your electricity hooked up all the time. Maybe you want to have the city water hooked up uh, all the time. I'm not sure, but that's what I do. That's what works for me. So I'd be curious to hear what others do in the comments section below, share so that other people can read what your experience is as well. Thanks very much for your question, Kirsten. It was a very good one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love if you became a subscriber. It helps me continue to make great videos. Leave a comment in the comment section below, and I try to answer each and every one of them. We'll see you again next time on Ultra Mobility, your channel for Class B Camper Dance. Take care. Bye-bye.